Oh! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver. One of those persons closest to the Lone Ranger was the padre of a small mission. Often when this good man wished to see the masked man, he passed the word to friendly Indians. This word went out in ever-expanding circles until the Lone Ranger learned of his friend's desire. It was in response to one of these calls that the Lone Ranger and Tonto, his faithful Indian companion, rode into the patio of the mission. <laughs> Amigo, you have come. I am glad. Hello, Padre. How? We started as soon as we received your message. Fortunately, we weren't far away. Pablo will care for your horses. Come with me inside where it is cool. Thanks, Padre. Oh, it is good to see you. You're well, I hope? Yes, Padre. Where now? And you, Tonto? Oh, me good. I am glad. Padre, it's always much cooler in here. See, si, I know. I offer it as a pleasant haven to my friends. Sit down, won't you? Then I will tell you what I have for you. Thank you, Padre. It sounds as if you have heavy work for us this time. Amigo, to be truthful, I cannot say. All I have is this letter. Oh? The amount of work depends upon the results of your investigation. I see. This letter came about a week ago. It's from a man who calls himself Champ Simpson. He lives in a little mining camp not far to the west. Here, senor, you may read it for yourself. Very well, Padre. It's written in a very cramped scrawl. It must have taken the man quite some time to write a letter of such great length. I could hardly read it. Perhaps you can make it out. Well, I'll try. It says, uh, dear Padre, a few days ago I was riding north of Snake Gulch, the mining camp where I live, when I heard a big ruckus over on the other side of some hills. It sounded like plenty of trouble to me. There was a lot of shooting, and I recognized the wolves and the Comanches. I was sure right about the trouble. By the time I got to where all the ruckus was, the Comanches had left their mark and run. Most of the wagons was overturned and blazing. There didn't seem to be no one left alive. Just as I was about to ride away, I heard a cry. It was that cry of a little girl. First, I thought I was hearing things, and then it came again. Someone help me, please. And I realized then it was coming from one of the wagons in the center of the train, one of the few that wasn't burning. I rode up and dismounted, and the kids crying continued. Help! Help me, someone! And I hurried through the overturned wagon. 
wagon and saw that the cries was coming from under a box of equipment in the far corner. I pulled the box away, and there, all wrapped in blankets, was the sweetest little ten-year-old girl you ever did see. She had big blue eyes and big tails and was just plain scared to death. Gee, thanks, mister. I guess you saved my life. Oh, it ain't nothing. You let me help you out of here. Thank you. You know, if I hadn't heard you crying, I'd have missed you. Well, I'm glad you... Say, I don't remember you. What's your name? My name's Champ. Champ? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Champ Simpson. My name's Judy Higgins. Judy, huh? Golly, that's a nice name. I don't know why my mother named me Judy, but... Say, Champ. Huh? Where is my mother and my daddy? Oh, Judy, I... Where are they, Champ? Well, now, I... I, I just remembered... The Indians caught us. My mother saw them coming. She hid me in those blankets where I'd be safe. Yeah, I know. But where is she now, Champ? And where are our horses? Well, I'll have to give it to you straight, kid. You're the only one left alive out of the whole train. You... You mean... My mother and daddy... <laughs> <laughs> Then I shoot it. Don't cry like that. Don't cry. Old chap will take care of you. Oh, Jim. You're so nice, but... But you're not my mother. <laughs> Senor, you had better keep it with you. What do you want me to do? I already know something of this Champ Simpson. He is a good man and is perfectly honest. I'm sure he can be trusted. I see. But this Snake Gulch, I'm told it is a bad place in which to raise a child. There is much gambling and drinking there and no other little children. I must know more of conditions there before I make a decision. Out of there, we'll get all the information you need. Bueno. But please wait until morning. Very well. That will give us more time to discuss the matter. Yes. I've invited some people to visit me tonight. They may be able to help us. Good. Meanwhile, back in Snake Gulch, two crooks were huddled in a remote corner of the community's only cafe. They were Steve Hudson and Dude Calloway, his partner. Dude, I just found out there's a load of dust going out of here tonight on a special midnight stage that'll make you and me rich. If we can knock off that load, we'll never have to work again. Now you're talking. You got a plan? Certainly I have. But we got to be mighty careful. This is a special shipment, and most of the prospectors will have dust on it. We'll have to establish a mighty good alibi. Dude, we've got to think of some army that won't have an alibi. Then work it so everyone will suspect him. We'll stick around town till he's convicted and take our gold and vamoose. Who are you going to pin it on? Champ Simpson. Steve, you're picking a pretty tough hombre there. Champ Simpson's feared by every man in Snake Gulch. You can't Don't just... Don't forget, him. dude, right now old Champ ain't any too popular with the other miners. Oh, you mean because he's insisting on keeping that little girl, uh, Judy, here in Snake Gulch? That's right. They all want him to get rid of the kid. But he insists he can bring her up proper. Yeah, I heard of He even wants to hire a teacher for the kid and bring her here to Snake Gulch. <laughs> that shouldn't increase his popularity. Dude, that hombre's a natural for us. Uh-huh. You might be on the right track. I know I am. Just about everybody in town will have an alibi. They'll be seen around the cafe or the general store. All except Simpson. He's spending his evenings home playing nursemaid to the kid. By golly, he's the one, all right. Sure he is. With Champ, it'll be easy. 
We're both about the same build. Both weigh about two and a quarter. That's right. With a mask over my face. Come on, let's get started. Where are we going? Dude, we're going out to Champ's place to get some very incriminating evidence. A short while later, Steve and Dude arrived at Champ Simpson's. There was no light in the house. He and Judy, the little girl whom he befriended, were fast asleep. The two men climbed through an open window. Quiet. Be quiet now. We can't have anything go wrong. What you looking for, anyway? I need something that belongs to Champ that'll... Look. Look here. What is it? His hat. Right here on the table. Yeah? Let's see. This hat ought to fit me. Yep. It's just right. Is that all you need? That's all. Come on, then. Let's get out of here and stop that stage. Loaded with gold, the midnight stage pulled out of Snake Gulch on a special run to the bank in San Bernardino. A few miles out of the gulch lay a narrow pass, a dangerous point where the stage had to slow down in order to get through. It was at this pass where Steve and Dude lay waiting. The stage should be coming along any minute now, Steve. We're set for it. Are you sure the hat will be enough? Sure it will. I printed Simpson's name in the hat band. Then when I kind of accidentally drop the hat in the fracas, the driver or guard will pick it up as evidence. You sure they can't trace our prints? How could they? There's nothing in this pass but dry gravel. They'll just find the hat and old champ will get the credit for the holdup. Listen, Steve. I think I hear the stage coming now. Yeah, dude, you're right. Get set. He's slowing the team down to go through the pass. I can see him and his guard up on the box. Real plain in this moonlight. Yeah. Let's get down there on the trail. Get up there. Get up there. Come on. Right up there. Right up. Hold that stage. Hold up, man. That's right. You catch on fast. Now hang down that gold and we can both be on our way. And make it fast. Not while well I'm guarding this stage. Watch him. Watch that guard. Killed him! You killed my guard! You Shut up and hand down that gold before you get the same. All right, but I'm a warning you. This is going to go hard, will you? Never mind the loose talk. Here's the gold. Fine. I'll throw down your guns. Don't forget the guard's rifle. Oh. I'll just get down and take those guns. Hey, look. You dropped your hat. Let it go. We got the gold. Let's vamoose. Get on. Get up there. Get up. I got a feeling the sheriff back in Snake Gulch is going to be powerful interested in this hat. So they killed your guard and took all the gold? That's right, Sheriff. Do you have any lead on who the crooks were? Well, one of them was a big hombre. I should judge he stood about six foot and weighed at least 200 pounds. Oh. He dropped his hat, too. Thought perhaps you might... Well, might let, me, let me see that hat. Uh, sure. Look her over. Uh, look, here in the sweatband. What is it? It's his name, Champ Simpson. Printed on there, big as life. Why, well, golly, that's right. I never thought he'd resort to robbing and killing. You mean you know this Champ fella? Uh, I sure do. He's one of the roughest critters in Snake Gulch. Uh, but he's always had a heart bigger than the moon. Why, only the other day he took in a little ten-year-old girl after her folks were massacred by Comanches. Well, it looks like you got him with the goods. Uh, things like this would make me wish I wasn't a sheriff. Well, you've got no choice. I know, I know. Still, locking him up and sending that little girl back east to an orphanage ain't the sort of duty I enjoy. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. Although it was a hard duty to perform, the sheriff of Snake Gulch arrested Champ Simpson for robbery and murder. Judy also was taken into custody while arrangements could be made to send her to an orphanage in the east. Arriving in town the following morning, the Lone Ranger and Tonto learned of the events of the night before. Tonto, it's hard to believe Champ is a criminal after what the Padre said. Ah, him say Champ honest man. There's something strange going on. Ah. I must talk with Champ. Uh, him locked in jail cell. Yes, I know. I'm going there to see him. Ah, what me do? I'll meet you later on the edge of town. Who's there? Morning, okay. Sheriff. Why, you're a man. I mean no harm. A masked owl who's just don't walk into my office like this. Sheriff, uh, all masked men aren't outlaws. I, uh, I want to talk to Champ Simpson. Champ Simpson, huh? So you're working with him? No, I'm not working with him. I only want to talk with him. What about? Sheriff, I've never met Simpson, but from what I'm told, he's rough but honest. Well, he got nothing on me. I've known him ever since he hit Snake Gulch. And until last night, I thought the very same thing. Perhaps we're right about him. I only wish we were. Uh, what proof do you have that Champ robbed the stage and killed a guard? Well, nothing except what the stage driver told me. There were two bandits. One of them was built like Simpson. Oh, I see. During the fracas, the big fella's hat fell off and the driver picked it up. When he brought it in and showed it to me, I found Simpson's name printed on the sweatband. Hasn't Simpson offered an alibi? Not a very good one. Says he was home sleeping. Well, Sheriff, do you believe a man who would befriend a little child would resort to robbery and murder? You know about little Judy? Yes, I do. You know... That's what's troubling me. I... Perhaps uh, he's a victim of circumstantial evidence. I'd like to talk to him. I'd like to hear his story. Say, who are you anyway? All right now, that doesn't matter. Can I see him? I guess it won't do any harm. Come with me. Thanks. Now, don't try any tricks, though, because I'll be watching you. Don't worry. Yeah, this is his cell. Champ, I've got a fellow who wants to talk to you. Good morning, Champ. Hey, Champ, what is this, sir? I don't know this man, Sombre. Why do you bring him here for? Don't be alarmed, Jim. What the... That mask? I'm a friend. When you want out, just call me. Thanks, Sheriff. I won't be long. Hey, no. What's this all about? Ain't I got enough trouble without you coming into my cell to pester me? Champ, uh, the Padre sent me. The Padre? Yes. Perhaps I can help you. Well, what can I say? All the evidence is against me. Most of the miners was mad at me anyway for trying to keep the little girl and give her some schooling. Now they think I tried to hijack the gold. Yes, I know all that. But so far, all the evidence against you is based on the fact that someone answering your description left your hat behind with your name in it. You know, that, that's the funny part of it. I've been trying to tell them, but... I don't talk so good. I mean, it's hard for me to explain things. You see, I never had no book learning. What are you trying to say, champ? Well, sir, I know doggone well I put my hat on the living room table before I went upstairs to bed. I know it just as sure as I'm standing here. Go on. Well, anyway, when the law come after me, I couldn't find my hat nowhere. I see. And then the sheriff told me about the driver finding it and... He's seeing my name on the band. But uh, there's a catch in that, too. What do you mean? I never put my name in my hat. You didn't? Shut snow. Why, why, I can hardly put my name on a piece of paper. Oh. It gives me an idea. There's a pencil and a piece of paper. Print your name for me. Use your full name, Champ Simpson. Well, it seems kind of crazy, but I'll do it. Uh, let's see now. See? H A M P S I M S No 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 wait no wait um P and S O N yeah. There you are. Good. 
I'll uh, take this with me. Well, I told you it wouldn't look so good. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, Sheriff. Yep, I'm coming. You're leaving now? Yes, I have some work to do, champ. But you'll hear from me later. After checking Simpson's signature with the writing in the hat, the Lone Ranger, disguised as a miner, walked into the cafe. Unnoticed by others, his eyes traveled about the room. No one escaped his careful gaze. He was looking for a man about six feet tall and weighing about 225 pounds. A man resembling Champ Simpson. Suddenly, his studied gaze stopped. In one corner, two men were huddled together. One answered the description. Pulling a pencil and an official-looking letter from his pocket, the Lone Ranger went into action. Across the cafe, the two men continued their conversation. Well, Steve, it looks like everything's going along like we planned. Yeah. Champ is so dumb he won't be able to figure anything out. He'll just sit in that jail until they take him out to hang. That's about it. Hey, Steve, look. What's wrong? That big tall army over in the middle of the cafe. I see him. The crowd gathered around him. Wonder what he's up to. I don't know. He seems to have a paper of some kind there. Yeah, everybody seems to be silent. Come on, dude. What's he gonna do? We're going over and see what's going on. Thanks, mister. Well, who's next? <clears throat> Pardon me, stranger. Yes? What is it? What you got there? Uh, this is a letter addressed to the governor demanding past justice in the Champ Simpson case. We're all signing it. Mm, I see. It uh, seems that the sheriff hates to believe Champ's guilty. So I've heard. By uh, calling the matter to the governor's attention, we'll assure a fair trial. By golly, I'm for that. Let me put my John Henry down there. Certainly. And my friend here will sign, too. Won't you do it? Sure, I will. I'll see. When do I sign? Uh, right here. Uh, print, if you please. It's easier to read that way. Very well. There you are. Thanks. You've been a great help. The Lone Ranger left the cafe and rode to the edge of town where he met Tonto, who helped remove his disguise. Together they went to the sheriff's office. Here, Sheriff. Compare the printing in the hat with the name Steve Hudson on the bottom of this letter. Oh, where did I get the hat? I got it right down here beside the desk. Good. There it is. Well, let's compare the printing. Well, I don't see how you... Notice the similarity. I always figured all printing looked alike. This is a sample of Champ's printing. Compare it to the names in the hat and on the letter. Uh, let me see. Why, there's a big difference. I can see it easy. Notice the H in Champ, then the H in Hudson. Uh, they're the same on the letter and the hat. And the S in Simpson and Steve. By golly, that's right. And look at the S-O-N on the two last names. Compare that with Champ's printing now. Well, they're as different as night and day. That's right. But we'll need more evidence than that to prove Champ innocent. We must trap the man who's guilty. You mean Steve Hudson? Yes. Well, I can't just walk out and pull him in on such evidence as this. Gotta have something more to go by. Now listen, Sheriff. I have a plan. Nearly two hours later, Steve Hudson and Dude Calloway returned to their room in the town's hotel. They were well satisfied with what they had witnessed at the cafe. Well, Steve, looks like it's about all over but the shop. Sure. The miners are getting so aroused about the robbery, Champ will be lucky if they don't storm the jail and lynch him. The tall critter with the letter of the governor was playing right into our hands. He sure was. Looks like we can rest... Steve, look... Now, what's wrong with you? Look, Steve. They're in the middle of the bed. Look at it. Look. Jumping Jupiter. It's that hat we stole from Champ's place last night and used to frame him with. How'd it get here? How did that hat I get I don't here? know. Last I heard, the driver gave it to the sheriff. Steve, someone's wise to us. We got a vamoose. Right. Is the gold still in the saddlebags? Sure. All the loot's right here in the closet. Get it out of there. We got to clear out pronto. Are we going to pack? No time for that. We'll haul the bags down the back stairs, get our horses, and head for the border. All right, Steve. I'll get the gold right now. You all need that gold. Stand where you are. Steve, it's a masked man. Masked man, eh? And he's got the sheriff with him. That's right. And, and a red skin. Sheriff, have you heard enough? You bet your life I have. I'll just tie these two up. Oh, you don't. I'll that show gun. Oh, oh. My oh. golly, I call that mighty good shooting. Tonto, help the sheriff tie these two up. Uh-huh. Me fix them. Sheriff, 
Your next move is to free champ. Mister, I don't know how I can ever thank you for what you did for Judy and me. I was pretty worried when they put Uncle Champ in jail and were trying to send me to an orphanage. Champ, uh, what are your plans for Judy? Well, sir, I'm kind of troubled about that. Oh. I realize now that Snake Gulch ain't such a good place for her. But, Uncle Champ, I want to be near you. Yeah, but you need book learning and someone to give you better care than me, you see. Champ, uh, the Padre has a solution. The Padre? What's he say? There's a couple living not far from here who are childless. They'd give Judy a wonderful home and the education you want her to have. They'll uh, come to see you tomorrow. But what about my Uncle Champ? Judy, they also need a good foreman. Now, if Champ were to take the job, you could see him every day. By golly, I... I only wish I was smart enough to be able to tell you how much I... Appreciate what you've done. Just take good care of Judy, Champ. Adios. Yeah, adios. Oh, Champ, he's such a nice man. Yeah. Take a good look at him, Judy. He's a man to remember. A man to remember? He spends all his time seeing that other folks get a square deal. He's known as the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. I'll never forget him, Uncle Champ. have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.